Hey everybody, it's Laura Brazil, and this is Low Intensity Interval Training. Excited to have you here today. You're going to need, I have two sets of hand weights behind me. Um, one is a lighter set for a dumbbell row that we're gonna be doing and a heavier set for a dumbbell deadlift that we'll do. So grab your appropriate weights for you today. I'm at about seven and a half for the light and 12 and a half for the heavier. Um, just pick what's right for you. And let's get started. I've got my mat here. We're gonna start seated today with the heels down, toes up. And we're gonna do, I call these windshield wipers. And I'm moving from my hips here, warming up the hips. We're doing deadlifts, squats, single leg balance. I want those hips warmed up. And you can let the hip pick up now on that other side. Before I was keeping my butt on the ground. But now I'm moving through a bigger range, getting the low back involved. Couple more, one more each side. And then we're gonna go onto our back for some glute bridges. So on the back, feet flat on the floor. If it's uncomfortable to be head flat on the ground, put a pillow or something under your head. Roll up beach towel, it works well. And then lift the hips up and lower back down. We lift, we lower. I'm using my hamstrings and my glutes here, trying to keep the work out of my back, my low back. So if you feel it in your low back, lower the height that you're lifting. So it's just working the back of the leg and the glutes. Two more. Nice, starting to warm that up there. We're gonna come to hand knee position now. Do a little cat and cow. Warming up the low back and the upper back even more, getting the spine all the way along, moving. We tend to hold it in one position for long periods of time. And from here, you're gonna tuck your toes if they're not tucked already and shift your push with your arms to push your hips back towards your heels. Pull with your arms forward, push with your arms back. So it's like I'm gripping with my hands here, even though they're flat, they might be slightly sliding on your surface, but they're not really moving, moving. So it's still an active shoulder warm up, warming up the hips too. To really get things going here, tuck the toes, re-tuck, lift the knees a little bit. You can hold here and just go up, down, and those reverse there, so up, down. So working the upper body and the lower body and the core, really getting the core involved. If it's available to you, keep the knees up and do that same rock, pushing and pulling with the arms. Getting most of our major joints here, knees, hips, shoulders, and some wrists as well. If it's too much for the wrist, you can come back down and go here and go back up. All right, we're now gonna lift the knees up, walk the hands back. I'm gonna step off my mat and we're gonna do some plank walkouts. So walk out with the hands into a plank, hold for a moment. Try not to lock your elbows up, keep this micro bend in your elbows, walk back. We're gonna march in place one for up. Two marches. Adding in the arm, the motion of the arms too. All right, back down into a plank walkout. Come into that plank. Give a little bend to the elbows so we're not locking the elbows out, putting strain on the ligaments. Hold for a moment longer. You've got this. Walk back. March in place. If your hips are really tight, you might do a little bit lower march, a little bit smaller arm motion. If it's 
it's available. Can you make it fit? Really warm up. We're going to do this plank walkout one more time, and then we'll get started. So walk out to the plank, little bend to the elbows. If you lock your, I'm not going to do it with weight on. If you lock your elbows out, if you have a chance to do that, and then you go into this micro bend, you might feel like your shoulders fatigue really fast because you are outsourcing the work from the muscles to the ligaments. So now we're bringing the work back to the muscles. Walk back, stand, and last march in place before we get going. You can add a little jump if you'd like. And when I say jump, it's low intensity, low impact. So it can kind of be a little spring up as well, but add a little hop if it feels right for you today. Or stay march. All right. Today we're going to be doing like we like we've done the last couple weeks, 45 seconds on, then moving on to another exercise. We have four exercises in each group, and we'll go through them each twice. So you're going for this first one, you're going to need um, your lighter weights for a chest press on the floor. So get your weights ready by the floor area. I'll set the timer. All right. We're gonna start standing. We're gonna do, we're gonna reach the arms up overhead, stand on the left leg. And then we're gonna do a little arabesque here, or version. So this is balance. You can keep that toe down if you want to, or the leg can move back. So this would be the version with the toe down for balance. And this is the version here where you've got your balance, you're reaching up, you feel pretty good. Keep breathing here. Five seconds. And that's time. So let's go to our left leg, our right leg, standing on our right leg this time. Reach the arms up again. Reach back. If it's uncomfortable to have your arms up overhead the whole time, you can reach the arms back by the sides in the same direction as the leg, or you can reach them out in front of you. Kind of bring them down, reach them out. So you're not holding them there the whole time, or you can keep them out and overhead the whole time to work on a little bit more muscular endurance. All right, now we're down to the floor for our chest press. Have something under your head that's more comfortable, and we press up and lower down. Notice at the top of my press, my wrist and elbow are stacked over my shoulder. Many times I see people pressing and they stop here. Let's get that vertical arm. My elbows are coming back down toward my sides. Almost there. All right, set your weights aside. Stay on the floor though. We're gonna do some bicycle crunches. So engage your core, touch the opposite elbow to opposite knee. So right elbow, left knee. For me today, this pace feels really comfortable. If you want to go a little bit faster, you can. Or if you need to slow down, you can. If you need to lower down and lift with each one, you can absolutely do that. Almost there. Got a few variations. All right, we're going to go back up to those arabesque. Let's start on the right leg this time. You can reach up and out. And then as the leg goes back, you can slide the foot along the floor for that balance, that extra balance point. You can keep the arms up the whole time. Find your variation. 
or you can decide to have the arms go back. So you reach up when you stand, back when you go back. I don't want your shoulders to get too stiff here. Let's switch legs. On the left foot now, we're reaching back. Sometimes it's, I like to have the arms go forward. And why I taught it like this originally, then the leg goes back because it counterbalances the leg. The weight of the leg and the weight of the arms can help maintain our balance. 20 seconds left here. Nice and controlled. If you're going really fast through these, I challenge you to slow down to see if your speed is covering up your any instability. All right, back to the floor for our chest presses. Elbows start by the body and then press up. My palms face toward each other the whole time. If you felt like your weight was light that first round, you could go to your heavier weights. But always trying to get that stack at the top, right above the shoulder, elbow, then the wrist. This is the chest, the front of the shoulder. You're doing a great job. Just a few more reps here. All right, set the weight aside. Go back to your version of the bicycle. It might be here. This is our likely lowest intensity here. If you don't want to lift up the upper body, you can just do a slight twist. Or you can keep the legs and the upper body up the whole time, really challenging the core. You can play with speed too. You can go a little bit faster. But I want you to have control through the full range of motion. We're not just throwing our bodies around here. All right, grab a quick drink. We're going to go into our next block, work block here. And we're going to be needing our heavier weights nearby as well as our lighter weights. We'll also want um, our space to go into a side plank. There's a side plank involved in this one. So we're gonna start with our side plank actually. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna start on my left arm. So if you'll join me down on the floor, we're gonna lift and do a side plank. All right, I'm doing this from my elbow. You could do it from the palm. Doing it from the elbow, you're more in line with gravity, so it's a little bit harder. The higher your, the bigger the angle of your body, difference from head to toe, the easier it is for the core. I'm gonna go back down to my elbow. We've got 20 seconds left. Can you keep your top shoulder stacked over your bottom shoulder, or is it going forward? Can you get that stack? Fight that rotation. Doing great, almost there. We're gonna take a break from the planks right now. We're gonna stand up and work on an overhead press. So grab your lighter weight, weight at shoulder height, and press up. Now, if you have really tight shoulders, you might need to do body weight with this. And you can go out at a not exactly overhead angle for most people we have really tight shoulders just because of the way our environments are set up computers cars phones smartphones so we might be really tight so if you don't get 100 percent overhead don't worry i'd rather not have you build strength on top of a little shoulder dysfunction all right put the weight down side plank on your other side now All right, maybe you're on the same setup as the other side, maybe not. If this is too hard being down on the floor, try it up on a coffee table um, or something else that is sturdy, hopefully a sturdy coffee table. 
which will make this a little bit easier. Put your hand on it. Try again to stack that top shoulder over your bottom shoulder. Don't let it roll forward. We're really using that core down here. I like to pat it and say, good job. All right, we're going to our deadlift. So grab your heavy weight. And we're going to have our palms face our legs. And the, as we reach our hips back, and then forward again, we keep the weight as close to the legs as possible, which will be less strain on the lower back. If you find your weight swinging out here, that's a lot of work for the low back. Keeping the weights close to the leg also engages the big muscles in your upper back, primarily the lats. Almost there. Good job. All right. We're going back to our first side for the side plank. I'm going to add in an element if you want something more, if you're on the floor already and need more. I'm turning my arm so it's parallel with my body, which opens now. I get to open up my shoulder a little bit. Shoulder is stacked over the elbow, but you'll feel more engagement here in the, in the lat that I talked about, and a little stretch in the front of the shoulder too. So that arm position can change how this motion feels. Great job, almost there, a couple seconds. All right, grab your light weights for the overhead press. Whenever you're ready, get going. As you're pressing overhead, I wanna make sure that this motion is coming from your shoulder and not your spine. So no arching. This is an arch example of arching here. I don't want you to lean back in order to get this weight overhead. Keep the torso still as you press overhead. Just a couple more seconds here. One more rep. All right, back down to our final plank. On the second side, we're turning the arm parallel to the body. To get a little bit more opening of the bottom shoulder. Some people like to have their arm up on this one too. It can kind of help make sure that the shoulders are stacked. You'll notice if it rotates forward. <sighs> Just 15 seconds left, you've got this. Breathe, no breath holding on this. This is an isometric hold. So we don't want to hold our breath as well. Almost there. Time. Last time with the big weights here for the deadlift. All right, when you're ready, reach those hips back, weight stays close to the body. Inhale down, exhale to come up. Inhale down, exhale to come up. Notice that my spine isn't really changing position as I go down. I'm hinging from the hips. And as my hips go back, my knees bend, but they don't go forward. So this is a lot of back side of the body, not as much front of the leg. All right, that was the last one. Grab a drink for our final work block here. And you'll need your lighter weights around here. For this next one, we're gonna be doing some rows. But we're gonna be starting with lunges. So hopefully you've had your drink. We're gonna be doing lateral lunges here. So I hope you're standing. I'm just gonna hit my timer. All right, I'm gonna start moving to my right. If you're doing near image, you're moving to your left. We're gonna do one side for 45 seconds and then the other side. So a lot of times people tell me that their lateral lunges bother the knees. So I want you to really focus if that's you, 
notice as I go back, I'm gonna turn the other way, that my knee stays pretty stacked over my ankle. If your knee is drifting forward, there probably will be more pressure because the femur is pushing forward. So reach the hips back like you did on your deadlift. One more. And switch sides. Moving to the left. I'm moving toward my left now. Reaching my hip back. Keeping my knee stacked over my ankle. You might notice I have my hands out in front of me and they go slightly forward as I go back. That's the counterbalance, the weight of my hip moving backward. 15 seconds left. If you're feeling like these lunges feel pretty good this first round, next time you can add a weight. Just for fun. We're here just for fun, right? And a good sweat. All right, let's go to our two-arm row, grab your lighter weights, hinge the hips back, pull the weights up. Pull up, exhale up, inhale down. My elbows are staying close to my body. And the reason I want your elbows close is that I find that when a lot of people go out wide with the elbows, they can create a, uh, an impingement situation for the shoulder. So let's not impinge. Let's just get stronger in the back here. We're lifting that elbow toward the ceiling. All right, we're gonna go back down to our mat. The final exercise in the series. We're doing mountain climbers. So we're doing, since this is low intensity, maybe not low intensity, but low impact. I like low impact here. You can walk these mountain climbers. This first time, I'm just drawing my knees straight forward. So I'm going forward, keeping the same side in line with that same side hip. Make sure that the elbows have a little bend in them. You can speed it up if it feels comfortable, but we're already back to the lunges. So if you want to, you can grab a weight through a lunge or two weights. This time I'm gonna go toward my left leg first. If you're doing mirror image, you're going towards your right leg. I've got my weight in front. I don't have to send my arms out as far in front of me here because I have that weight. We're trying to strengthen here the lateral hips. especially on the side we're moving toward. Doing great, just a couple more seconds here. Last one. All right, now move to the other side. Again, if you find your knees are bothering you, if you have a mirror that you can look in that sideways view, check in. Is your knee staying stacked over your ankle? or is it sliding forward? That's a lot more pressure. Doing great. Less than 20 seconds here. Going nice and controlled. You're almost there. A couple more reps. All right. Grab that second weight if you didn't have if you are both of them, if you didn't have it before, we're going into our row. Last time I did it from the side view, this time I'm going from the front view. As the weight comes up, it floats up toward your waist. Nice job. Inhale down, exhale up. If this bothers your lower back, you can do one at a time. Support, give a little bit support on the opposite leg. You're feeling good. You've just got a few seconds left here. All right, last set of mountain climbers. This is it. This time you can come across the body. 
Do a little spinal rotation. Make sure there's that little bend in your elbows. We're not outsourcing the work of the arms and shoulders to those ligaments. You can speed up if it feels comfortable, but if you're trying to keep that impact down, you can just stay right here. Ten seconds left. You've got this. Focus on the breath. Finish strong. And that's it. All right, you made it through all three of our work blocks. So grab a drink of water before we cool down. All right, we did some lateral lunging today. So we're gonna start with a wide foot stance for our cool down. Remember, we never wanna just stop moving. So we're gonna to move toward, moving toward my right leg. And you can stay here and put a little weight on that, that leg. Feel the stretch in your inner thigh. You can pull up the tip of the toe if you'd like. Put it down. Pull it up. Notice how the foot position can change the line of pull on the inner thigh. Good. Switch sides. Hang out here. Find that foot angle that feels comfortable for you. You can pull up, go down. Nice. Trying to stretch out that inner thigh. If you want to put your hands down on the ground, you can do that. Good. And actually, let's keep the hands down on the ground. Go back to that first side. Get a little bit of mobility work in here. This type of knee bend might not be available to you, so you could send your hips up again and play with going back and forth, forward and back. Or you can hang out down here, feel that even bigger stretch as you pull your toes towards your shins. And then we switch sides, you can lift the hips up, keep the hands on the ground, and come into that really low lunge down here. <sighs> Staying kind of active, checking in with our breath. How are you feeling? All right, we're getting, going to go one more time onto that first side. We're playing with this lunge cool down. You're gonna put your knee down and then you can go back to a flat foot if it's available. There's a lot of, again, this is mo uh, mobility training for your ankles, knee, hips. I'm going nice and slow. If you had something under your head or you could put something under your heel here so that you can actually relax down into this if having your foot flat on the floor isn't available. Limiting the range. Let's switch sides. So I'm dropping my knee down. If you want to just stay here with the knee down, you can do that. Or you can work through that range. And do a small range here. There's less load toward the front, put more weight in our hands and upper body. All right, we're gonna come into knee hand position. Just like in our warm up, do a little cat cow. Nice work. And then you're going to reach through. I'm going to reach through, like thread the needle here with my left arm, stretch out the back of my arm. If you have high blood pressure or are managing high blood pressure, keeping your head below your heart is the smartest thing. So we can stay up and reach through like this. You'll still get the stretch and the motion that we're looking for. It'll keep you in a healthier position. If it feels good, you can sit down. 
stretch out, get a little bit more rotation. Nice job. You're gonna come back, return to the back position. You can keep your feet flat on the floor, stretch out the front of the chest, get those weights out of the way. If you find a spot that's really tight, you can hang out there. We're doing those floor angels to open up the front of the chest. You can always put something under your head. It's uncomfortable to be flat on your back. And then you're gonna cross your left ankle over your right ankle and draw the right leg in. Not trying to force anything here. I already feel a stretch. I, I could go like this, but you can see how my whole pelvis starts to move. And this, we want to get the, the muscles of the hip. So I just want to move from the hip. I don't need to go any farther. I already feel a stretch. If you can't grab your leg, you can use a scarf or a belt or other, some other type of strap to hold on and pull it in. And if you already feel a stretch here, you can just hang out there. Let's switch sides. This side for me is always a little bit tighter. So if you go back and look at the, how I was doing the other side, I can go a lot farther. And most of us have that right to left difference in our hips and shoulders and wrists and all of it. Because your right and left hip, hip even though they've, your body's gone through life, um, experiencing life all as a whole, your hips have experienced life differently. So. Embrace the fact that this figure four stretch might feel very different from side to side. And once you're done, you can unhook your ankle from that opposite knee and come on up because you did a great job today. Thanks for being with me at low intensity strength training. Again, I'm Laura and it was great to have you here. Bye.